What is going on everyone? My name is Nick. I'm a radiology resident in Minneapolis and in today's video we're going to be talking about the importance of research both in the undergraduate level as a pre-med student but also during medical school. You likely know that research can give someone a competitive edge when it comes to applying to residency for their specialty and when it comes to applying to medical school. Even if you aren't applying to a very competitive medical specialty or a competitive medical school, it can still significantly strengthen your application. Although it might not be as important as things like your grades, your class rank, and the quality of your letters of recommendation, some programs value research quite a lot. So with that said, why should we all be doing research as pre-meds and medical students? Aren't we all already busy enough as it is? I think the main reason to do research is because it will help you become a better doctor and ultimately, take better care of patients. Finishing a research project will teach you so much about the scientific method. It'll teach you how to formulate a hypothesis and test it. It'll teach you how to do a literature search, how to critically read research studies, how to collect and analyze data, and it will improve your writing and communication skills. Some people end up enjoying research so much that they actually end up pursuing a career that has a heavy emphasis in research. Other people find that doing research provides them the foundation for practicing evidence-based medicine. Research is the foundation of evidence-based medicine, so you'll be in a better position to interpret scientific advances and translate those to improve patient care. Also, working closely with a research mentor means that this person will become very familiar with your communication skills and your work ethic. This alone can lead to a very strong letter of recommendation and this individual can actually become a career advisor or a mentor down the line. Mentors can provide invaluable guidance. Their recommendations alone can significantly strengthen your application, open other doors for you, find you other research projects, and even increase your chances of matching in a certain specialty or in a certain program or of getting into a certain medical school. We've all heard this before. Sometimes it's not about how much you know, but sometimes it's about who you know. Another reason to do research in medical school or in undergrad is because publications and presentations can oftentimes serve as relatively easy topics during interviews. For example, they can help build rapport and professionally network, especially when residents, faculty, and program directors have similar or related research interests. So how do we actually do research? Sometimes finding research opportunities can be difficult, but honestly, just by seeking them out, it already shows drive, commitment, and enthusiasm. There aren't any hard and fast rules for finding research projects, so I would start by asking classmates who are just one or two years ahead of you. These classmates have likely already done research projects and already know who the professors are who are great to work with. And when you're on clinical rotations or shadowing in the hospital, consider keeping an eye out for unique cases because these can make for case reports, which are quick and easy write-ups that you can publish. Some students even set up an entire research rotation for four weeks, and many medical schools even have entire research offices that are dedicated to helping you out. As you may be able to tell, generally these opportunities to publish go to students who are quote-unquote self-starters. Another way to get involved in research is by directly contacting the person who's in charge of the rotation, the program director, or even the department chair. You could simply email faculty members and express your interest in certain projects that they have going on. Most schools have some sort of database where they list the professor and their available research projects, so I would encourage you to seek that out. Just try and figure out which professors are good to work with, who enjoy working with students, and who publish a lot and contribute to the medical literature. Be sure to send them your resume, let them know what research interests you have, what skills you have to offer, and what type of time frame you have or you anticipate dedicating to a project. And make sure to give them an out because sometimes people are simply too busy or they don't have an available project, but odds are they can probably connect you with someone who can land you a project and help you out. Now, if you're given a deadline, consider this as an opportunity to exceed these expectations, both in terms of timeliness and quality. Definitely do not wait until the last minute to come up with a rough draft and then rush to send it in before the deadline. Try and make your first draft as close to perfect as possible because what this will do is send the message to your mentor that your attention to detail is impeccable and you always try your best on the task at hand. After all, you only make first impressions once. And please don't forget to proofread both for grammar and spelling, especially for medical and scientific jargon that neither you or the spell checker are very familiar with. Although it goes without saying, 
While research can significantly strengthen your application, you should never participate in a research project for this reason alone. If buffing up your resume is your only reason for doing research, then this will be glaringly obvious to both your research mentor and your colleagues and might actually backfire and look pretty bad. So in conclusion, research can be an invaluable component to both the residency application and the med school application. It can demonstrate dedication to a certain medical specialty, it can strengthen letters of recommendation, and serve as potential topics during interviews. And most importantly, research experience has benefits that extend far beyond what it can do for your application. For example, it can help you become a better doctor and take better care of patients. And that wraps up this video. So if you found any of this helpful, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram if you aren't already, and I'll catch you in the next one.